Well, good morning, church. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm actually enjoying a day of rest today, and I thought I would take advantage of our modern technology to uh, just kind of keep on track with our sermon series here. So uh, we're in week nine of our sermon series through the book of Acts, and we're calling this series The Power of His Presence. And the book of Acts is basically an account of how things moved forward in the absence of the physical presence of Jesus. And so it really is a, a history of the Christ-following church. Now, as we take this journey through Acts, we are framing our discussions in such a way that acknowledges that every single one of us has a difference to make. What we choose to do really does have an impact. Whether we choose to show up or not show up, whether we choose to give or not to give, whether we choose to participate or not to participate, we choose to add value or not to add value, if we choose to do what everyone else does or if we choose to live by a higher standard, our choices have an impact. And we can see this truth throughout the book of Acts. And as we walk through this book, we really do see God transforming people's lives in very real and powerful ways. We see the power of his presence and we can choose to be intentional about the impact that our lives have on those around us. And so today we are looking at Acts chapters 10 and 11. And at this point in scripture, the church is growing pretty steadily. It's beginning to spread out past Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria. Uh, and now up to this point, those who are coming to be followers of Christ are mostly the Jews. But now things are starting to spread out a little bit beyond what even the disciples had imagined. So this thing is getting pretty big. Let's read uh, Acts chapter 10, starting at verse 1. Scripture says this, At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel of the Lord spoke to him, had, when the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened, and he sent them to Joppa. So we'll pause right there. So this scripture begins to give us a, a picture of these two worlds coming together. Cornelius is a, a Roman centurion, and he's a man of God, and God speaks to him and tells him to get a hold of Peter. So he sends Peter an invitation to come to his house for a visit. And in the meantime, God is also talking to Peter. He's giving him a new perspective about his love and his mercy. And as we look at this passage through the lenses of uh, lessons that we can learn as we purpose to make a difference, uh, have an impact for the kingdom Here's what I see, and it comes from verses 3 and 4. Uh, it says this back there. Your, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. And so here's the lesson that I see. What you choose to do, it matters. Your prayers, your gifts have power. Your faith going hand in hand with your works. Your praying, your standing in the gap for others at the throne of God. Your spending time in communication, speaking to and hearing from God. That relationship that you have pursuing, uh, you've been pursuing that relationship with him. That desire to, to know and to live the things of God. And your gifts to the poor. Those things that... You give so someone else can have enough. Those cans for the food pantry, the blankets for the homeless, the winter coats for the kids, that money that you give above and beyond your tithes to support those things, uh, those folks that are on the front lines of need. Excuse me. <coughs> All of that is working together, and it has come up as a memorial offering before God. God remembers those things, and God honors those things. You see, what you choose to do, it matters. Your prayers and your gifts have been seen and remembered by God. And as they come up, as God remembers them, he chooses to bless you today. God remembers and God moves 
and what you do, it makes a difference <coughs> because God sees all of it. <coughs> it's almost like I'm really here, isn't it? So don't just pray and don't just give, but let those things work hand in hand in your everyday life because it matters. Let's continue in the scripture, verse 9. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up, go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He's a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house <clears throat> so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into his house to be his guests. So here's the second lesson that I see that God says, and it's, uh, it comes in verse 15. Verse 15 says this, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And so the lesson that I see is this. <laughs> it's kind of like the lesson from last week where God is God and I am not. The lesson is you don't know everything. You don't have all of the answers. You can't predict how God's going to move. You're human and you see things through human eyes. You see things through your own experiences. And your experiences sometimes cause you to look at something that God has made clean and pure and still see it through the eyes of the world and not as God sees it. The scripture says man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart and just like we saw in, in, in Acts chapter 9, God can take a man like Saul who kills Christians and change his heart and use him to bring the gospel to, uh, of the same Jesus that he persecuted. Bring that good news to the Gentiles and to their kings. You see, we have no clue what God is doing all around us all of the time. So just take a quick second and look at the people around you. And you know what? You have no idea what God is doing in that person's heart or in their life. So let's be wise enough to not call impure anything that God has made clean. Let's continue in the scripture, verse 23. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them, <clears throat> and he called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house... Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence, but Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that this is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. <clears throat> Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything that the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. 
You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the providence of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around uh, doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. <laughs> so this whole uh, scripture, this is what I like to call Peter talking through the revelation. Now, so God gave him this revelation and he's kind of talking through it. And we have to do that sometimes. He, he's telling Cornelius and, and he's telling him uh, about Jesus. Uh, he's keeping the main thing, the main thing. He's saying, here's what happened. Here's what happened to Jesus. And he told us that we needed to testify about all that happened and all that we have seen and heard and help the people come to realize who he is and how much he loves them. And, and as Peter is talking, he says that, you know what, God is like right here right now too. He's right here in our midst. And then we see that the power of the Holy Spirit comes on all of them, just like Peter saw happen to the Jews. And he realizes that the pieces are starting to fall into place in his heart about what God is showing him and teaching him. And he, he gets a greater sense of how big God really is and how much he loves all of his people and not just the ones we think he should love. See, we, we need to let God show us new perspectives on things, things that we never really thought about before. Because you know what? There's no chance that God never thought about that thing. He's, all, he, he's like 27 steps ahead of us all the time. And how silly we are sometimes to think that we already have things all figured out. You know, I was <clears throat> realizing the other day that the older I get, the feel, I feel like the less I know. You know, like, like the more God shows me, the more he teaches me, the larger perspective he gives me, and the more I realize that I still have so much yet to learn. There's still just so many things I don't know. And Peter is having one of these awakenings in his heart. He's getting another piece of the puzzle that extends to eternity of the goodness and the love of God. He says, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but he accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. He's like, ah, now I see your perspective, God. I've never seen that before, and, and I'm reminded of how, how great God really is and how large the family and fellowship of believers really is, and, and I'm learning to trust God more and more, and I'm seeing more and more that he works in ways that I don't always expect, and, and he works through people that I don't always expect him to work through, and just as I think I've got stuff all figured out, he shows me something new. You know, you just got to love how God moves sometimes. Let's move on in the scripture to Acts 11. So here, a word of what happens, get, get back to the apostles. At first, they're a little bit upset because they don't really understand it. Scripture says this, Acts 11. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, they circumcised believers, criticized him, and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. So in the next 14 verses, Peter basically tells them the story that we just read in Acts chapter 10. So I'm not going to read it again. We're going to jump down to verse 18. Verse 18 says this. When they heard this, 
They had no further objections, and they praised God, saying, So then, even, the gent even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. So here's the lesson that I see here. You know, sometimes we get a little bit nervous when God moves in new ways. And we need to be careful that we don't just disregard something that God is doing because we didn't expect it or maybe we don't even like it. You know, the apostles were, uh, they were wise enough to say, okay, if this is what God is doing, then we do not object. And they praised God for what he was doing. See, sometimes the most critical people in the world are Christians. <laughs> Church, may we learn not to be so set in our ways or, or lean so much on our own understanding of God's ways. And may we just be people who let God move in whatever way he wants to move. Let's finish off this chapter, verse 19. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw that the grace of God had, what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first. At Antioch. So <clears throat> here's a quick lesson that I see. <laughs> Don't be in such a hurry all the time. You see, we, we want things to move forward quickly. We don't want to take the proper time for training. We don't want to sit and wait on God. We get a word about something, and we want to move on it. We want to shortcut the system, and we want to get it done faster. But, but there's much to learn in the process, and we need to let God move us to the next level on his time and not our time. Even Saul had to slow down and take some time to just be in a place and with the people, <coughs> living and working and preaching and fellowshipping, just being in the day-to-day -day discipline of life. <clears throat> because in all of that, God was teaching him while he served faithfully. You see, we, we have to learn to submit to the training that God has for us, even though it will take longer than we want it to. But if we will just be patient, we'll reap the benefits of that in the future. So if your dreams are moving slower than you want them to right now, don't be discouraged. God's preparing you for what will come next. <laughs> you just keep being faithful every single day. Let's keep going. Verse 27. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Well, here's the lesson that I see here. You know what? We need to we need to help each other out. As a church, we need to partner with other ministries. We need to work together. We need to share our resources. We need to help the hurting and feed the hungry. You see, we get territorial sometimes as churches and as people. You know, I was serving a different church years ago, and, and we were doing a community outreach, and there was another church about a block away, and they were taking part in the outreach as well. And uh, someone from our group was was trying to say hello to someone from their group. And in the course of our very brief conversation, we were told by the other group, this is our corner, and that's your corner. You stay on your side of the street, and we'll stay on our side of the street. You know, it shouldn't be that way in the kingdom, but it is that way a lot. We find it easier to compete with one another than we do to advance against the enemy together. God 
help us keep the main thing, the main thing, and give generously and work together well. May we, as much as depends on us, be open to helping others and sharing our resources and partnering with other like-minded individuals and entities that the kingdom of God might advance and that people may continue to have their needs met and that God may continue to be praised throughout the earth. Church, let's keep the main thing, the main thing. <laughs> and Jesus is the main thing. So let's, uh, let us depend on him. Let us trust in him. Let us look to him and live for him because he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. It's all about him. There is power in his presence and his presence changes everything. Amen? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day, for the opportunity that you give us to come around your word, to come into this fellowship of believers, to, to, to look at your word through different lenses sometimes. I've got to pray that you would um, just speak to each and every one of our hearts, that you would help us to see ways that we might be more about the things of the world than we are about the things of God, and that you would help us to make the choice to seek after you to pursue um, your ways, to seek your face, that you would give us the courage to keep the main thing the main thing. It's not easy to do. There's so many voices, there's so many emotions, there's so many expectations uh, that are flowing around us and within us all of the time, and sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy to keep the main thing the main thing. God, that's what we want to do. We want to do all of this because... You want us to do all of this, that we might lift your name on high, that you might draw all men to you, that we might help point people to Jesus just by loving them and, and living in the reality of you in our hearts and in our lives. God, we just um, pray that you would be glorified in all that we say and all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.